Anderson Bean and Fenolio are two US made brands in a similar budget range. And today I'm going to compare them here in this video so that you can see the differences if you're wondering about which one to go with. First, I wanna say that both are really good options. So if you're watching this video wondering which one of these brands to get, I really don't think that you could go wrong with either of them. My name is Jeremiah Craig. Thank you for joining me on this video today. We're gonna compare the Anderson Bean to the Fenolio, and I know one of them is ostrich and one of them is rough out, but we will just compare these based off of entire build quality. Let's start about where they're made. They're both made in the USA. Anderson Bean is made in Mercedes, Texas, and Fenolio is made in Nakona, Texas. In fact, they have a lot of people working at the Fenolio factory who used to work at the old Nakona boot factory there. Now let's compare build quality and start at the bottom and go up. All right, let's start with the heels. Anderson Bean has a bonded leather heel. Uh, this one on this ostrich is a stacked bonded leather. So bonded leather is just a way to use leather scraps and then combine it with glue to make sort of like a plywood board, except it's leather. And then they use that leather for things like heels. I wouldn't want that leather to be an outsole because it tends to be a little bit uh, weaker than leather as is, but for a heel, it's a good thing to use. Like a lot of heels out there will be bonded leather and it makes sense for Anderson Bean to go this way because it's also a cost savings. Sometimes you'll see stacked leather bonded heels on Anderson Beans and sometimes it will be more of like a block sort of looking where you can't see uh, the stacked bonded leather. The heel on the Fenolio is a stacked leather heel. Uh, it's not bonded, it's pure leather that they've used for the heel and stacked it. So that's something that a Fenolio does if that's what you were looking for. I have seen Anderson Beans with real stacked leather heels but just most of the time, like 95% of the time, you'll see them with bonded leather heels. Now let's talk about the outsoles. Both of these companies have leather outsole and rubber outsole options, but altogether Anderson Bean does offer a leather outsole, a Vibram rubber outsole, a crepe outsole, and a hybrid outsole, which is similar to what a leather outsole is, except it just has a strip of rubber at the ball of the foot section. Fenolio also has leather outsoles. This boot is an example of their Ranch Tough rubber outsole, which is really nice. And they also have a crepe outsole as well. I haven't seen a Fenolio boot to do a hybrid outsole yet, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they did. I should also mention that both of these boots are Goodyear welted, so that means if you should ever run through the outsole, whether it's a leather outsole, a rubber outsole, or whatever kind of outsole you have on it, it can be resold many, many times. So both of these can be repaired and used for quite a long time. All right, guys, let's talk about toe shapes now. Most often you will see an Anderson Bean with this exact toe shape uh, because they're known for this. They made it, I believe, in the late 80s, early 90s. So this is very unique to Anderson Bean and most of their boots have this now. I believe I've seen like a couple of different models from Saddle Rags that does have a cutter toe, a narrow square toe. And I have seen Anderson Beans in the past, like even before 1990 that uh, had J toes and R toes, but most of the ones that you'll find nowadays in lots of stores will have this wide square toe with a double stitched welt. Fenolia also has many different toe shapes. I would have to say that one of their most popular one is this one, which is a zero toe. Their cutter toe, also known as a narrow square, uh, but they also do wide square toes with double stitch welts and a few other toe shapes as well. Let's jump to the back of the boot again and talk about their spur ledges. The spur ledge is this section right here where the heel stops and the counter begins. A lot of cowboys will use this to rest their spurs on. Some of them won't. 
I know some other cowboys wear their spurs much higher and don't rest it on a spur rest. Uh, so we have two different kinds here. We have Anderson Bean's just leather spur rest or heel rand and Fenolio's plastic heel rand and spur ledge. So, you know, I've heard a couple of different things. Cowboy boot companies like the plastic spur ledge because it helps keep the leather from getting scratched up by the spurs getting placed on them and so on. So plastic can handle that sort of wear and tear a little bit better. So most producers out there, not just Fenolio, but many, like almost all of them will use a plastic. That's where Anderson Bean decided not to, at least on this boot and several other boots that I've looked at. And I really like the look of just this leather uh, over the plastic, but I completely understand why a boot company would wanna do this and treat it as like a shield or a guard to the rest of this leather down here. So that's completely preference and what you're gonna be using the boot for. Let's move up just a little bit and talk about heel counters which is this area of the boot right here. Both of these boots have leather heel counters, which is the best. Uh, that is very traditional. I would have to say though, that Anderson Bean's leather heel counter is much stiffer than what Fenolio's is. I just like the feel of a leather heel counter that's nice and stiff back here. Um, so that's just my preference. I don't think a lot of you will be having an issue because when it comes down to it, they're both leather heel counters and those are the best. All right, let's talk insoles and talk about the inside of the boot. Let's talk about Anderson Bean because they have a removable foam insole here that they put in their boots, but they also have a traditional hard leather insole under that. So this is a traditionally made boot and they even have kept the hard leather insole in there. So if you like that and you'd rather not uh, wear them with a removable insole, then you can do that. However, if you did want to do that, I would recommend sizing down a half size uh, because the insole does take up quite a bit of room in there. So if you were just to get your regular size and then take the insole out, it might end up being a little big. That's what I did with this and I loved my decision because I prefer a hard leather insole over any of the others. On the Fenolio on the inside, we have a soft leather insole that's non-removable. So it's a layer of foam topped with a layer of leather and then that's glued to the footbed. So you can't take this out. Uh, if you did take it out, you might have trouble putting it back in. So if you wanted something that kind of had the feeling of leather, but didn't want a hard leather insole traditional, uh, they've made this boot so you can enjoy that. And it is a very enjoyable experience. All right, let's talk about linings. Both of these boots feature cowhide linings, which is a great option. A lot of producers out there, whether they're making boots in Mexico, USA, and China, in order to keep their boots lower in price, will use pigskin leather, which isn't as good as cowhide. I've done a video on different linings that you can have in boots. You can check that out above. Cowhide is one of the best. It breathes really well. Uh, Probably not the, the best calfskin, which is still a form of cowhide, I guess, but calfskin is the best. I absolutely love that. Still, this is a very soft leather lining and it breathes really well in both boots. Let's talk about the tops and the openings for these boots. I've noticed that Fenolio does have a more narrow opening than Anderson Bean most of the time. I like this because I have skinny legs, but I know there are some people who have trouble with the fact that Fenolio's openings, their tops, the shafts are more narrow. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody having a problem fitting into an Anderson Bean boot. So if you have had that problem, let me know in the comments, but I have heard of people having trouble fitting into a Fenolio in the tops because their calves were too wide. So if you have a similar feature about yourself, then you might wanna take that into account. All right, let's talk about sizing. Both of these companies offer narrow to wide sizes so you can get 
B widths, you can get double E's, but most often in most retailers, you will find a D and a double E in both of these. You may have to special order if you are a B width or have a wide width. Uh, you'll have to talk to the retailers about that. For leather options in both of these companies, both have exotic options. Like I mentioned, you can get an ostrich boot uh, from Fenolio and you can get rough out boots from Anderson Bean. However, Anderson Bean has much more options for different kinds of leathers. So if you wanted something really exotic, you might want to look into Anderson Bean. Um, like I said, Fenolio does have exotics. They just don't have as many. Here's the too long, didn't watch main differences. The heels and the heel counters. The Anderson Bean is bonded leather block heel and the Fenolio is a stacked leather heel. The heel spur shelves here. The Fenolio is plastic. The Anderson Bean is leather and both of them have leather heel counters. The Anderson Bean one is a little bit more thick than what the Fenolio is. Another main difference is the insoles. So Anderson Bean has a removable foam insole with a traditional hard leather insole underneath that so you could wear it either way. And the Fenolio has a soft leather insole that is a layer of foam topped with a layer of leather and it's non-removable. The openings is another main difference. As you can see, the Fenolio shaft is much more narrow than what the Anderson Bean tops are. Both companies have similar toe shape options. However, you'll find a lot more wide square toe Anderson beans that also have the double stitch welt. Uh, and you'll see a much more broad range of options from Fenolio, most likely in your local stores. Another main difference between both the brands are the leather options. You can get so many more exotic leathers from Anderson Bean than you can from Fenolio at the time that this video was recorded. So with that, I want to know which one you prefer. Let me know down in the comments. This is a very equal matchup here in my opinion and I don't think that you could go wrong with either of them. I love wearing them both and I love that they're both made in the USA. I want to know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Peace. Fenolio and Anderson Bean Both are living the American dream with Similar features and the qualities You can't go wrong with either of these No <laughs> Why don't you check out each extended test to get a more in-depth flavor of each of these boots and brands Don't forget to subscribe over here and I'll see you next time Thanks so much for watching Peace Have a good one